gas training, testing air pressure switches in boilers. My name is Alan Hart and today I'm back at Viva Training Academy and we're going to show you, or Roy's going to show you how to test air pressure switches in, in gas boilers. Um, yeah, without further ado, let's uh, go over to Roy. This video is for gas safe registered and trainee gas engineers under supervision. Please comply with the current regulations at the time. Hi guys, it's Roy Fugler here at the uh, Diva Train Academy over in Halifax again. And today we're going to have a look at two wire and three wire air pressure switches. Um, I've got a couple of uh, rigs set up here. Both have got a fan on, both have got an air pressure switch. This one's got a two wire air pressure switch. This one's got a three wire air pressure switch. The test equipment I've got is my Faithful Fluke 114 multimeter and my uh, Digitron um, digital manometer. So I'm going to show you a couple of ways of testing them. One using the multimeter, I want to prove that the Venturi is clear and that there's a, a, a true passage um, through there so that it would uh, allow the products of combustion to be blown out and clean air to come in. So, I'm just going to turn my uh, multimeter on, so I'm going to put it onto the beep test. So, all I'm looking for is no, nothing, and then I've got a beep. So, that's telling me that's okay. And I'm going to turn my Anton on, and I'm going to zero it. So, I'm just turning this on. Wait for it to uh, just recalibrate itself. Just check in. And then it's zero. So, first thing I'm going to do is just make sure that the, uh, the air pressure switch and the Venturi are clear. So, I've got a couple of connections there. Obviously, if this was real life in a boiler, we're going to turn the power off um, before we start putting connections across air pressure switches. We're obviously going to need power on for the fans to run. So, we're simulating basically the fans running, but the boiler's not going to its ignition sequence. So, on a two-way air pressure switch, all it's looking for is something a connection and no connection. So at the moment we've got no connection, no continuity. The fan runs, the air pressure switch makes, and we're looking for continuity. So we're just going to turn turn the fan on. So the fan's a little bit loud, so I'll speak up. So I've got nothing, and then I go across, and I've got the beam, and it's saying zero. So I'm just going to turn this off. So I'll check the venture is clear because if it wasn't beeping, it could be the air pressure switch has failed. It could be the Venturi's got blocked up. So I'm going to check it. I've got a high pressure tube, so I'm just going to disconnect that. Now, on my uh, manometer, I've got a little T piece, so I can put the connection on there, and that goes to the high pressure side. And then I just disconnect the other one, just pull him off. It's a little bit stiff. There we go. And again, I've got a little brass T piece, and I'm going to go across. To the low pressure side so that's going across to the low pressure side down there making sure when i get it plugged in it doesn't interfere with the cooling blade so that's on there so when i turn this on now what i'm expecting i've got no pressure differential on there so i turn it on the fan's running and i'm now up to round about 2.5 millibar 2.45 millibar and again i'll just double check it and I've got the beep, so that's proving that that one's working. So that's on a two wire air pressure switch. I'm just gonna turn that off. I'm just gonna disconnect these and get rid of this board and pop it out the way. So just pop these out the way. So that's my low pressure one. Just fit it back on. And that's the high pressure one. So we'll just pop that to one side. So we're going to fetch a three wire air pressure switch board in now. So a three wire air pressure switch, you've basically got common. In this case, it's the black lead on the end. Then we've got normally closed, which is the brown one, and normally open, which is blue. So what we're looking for here is a signal from black to brown. And then when the fan comes on, it's looking for a signal from black to blue. So I'm just going to check black to brown. And we've got a beep, black to blue, we've got nothing on there. 
So that's proving that we've got no connection and a connection. So if I now turn this fan on, the beep has gone off, but if I move it black to blue, we can see we've got the connection. So this fan's a little bit loud. So I'm just going to connect across here using the uh, manometer. So on the high pressure tube, which is this one, and there's a little H on there, I'm just going to interrupt in that. So that's going to go across there. You can do this out in the field, all you need is a bit of extra manometer tube and a couple of T's. I got these brass ones off the internet. You can pick up plastic ones from um, pet shops. The, the normal use for fish tanks when you've got the air uh, tubes in fish tanks. So you can source them quite easily. Um, so I'm going to pop that across there now. So I'm just going to turn that on. So as we can see, we've now got 6.37 millibar. So that's what's affecting that pressure. So again, we've checked that that's working. Now if I block the Venturi off by using my finger, we can see that the pressure drops off. The pressure's disappeared. That's because I've got a black Venturi. So I'm just going to turn the fan off so that you can hear what I'm talking about. So one of the things that occasionally happens is we'll take tubes off to fit new components. And then if we get them crossed and pop them back on because it's, it's easily done, we've, we've made a mistake, we've got them on the wrong way. So we turn it back on. And obviously we've, we've replaced the fan, we've put an air tube shiny fan on, it's still not working, and we start banging our heads. Oh dear, we've put a part on, it's not working. It might be that you've just got the tubes crossed. Mobile phones are brilliant. Not so good for making phone calls, but great for taking pictures. I always take pictures. The boils I'm unfamiliar with, I'll take pictures to make sure when I pull the leads off, when I pull tubes off, I get them in the right place. So, once we pop them back onto the right connections, turn it back on. We can see we've got the, uh, the pressure back up. So, that was just a quick, quick video, checking two wire and three wire air pressure switches using either multimeter or a manometer. Obviously, when you're wanting to check them with multimeters, the problem is those connections could be mains voltage, 240. So it's quite a simple way of checking it. It's also proving you've got a free passage um, through the Venturi. One of the things I've come across in the past, when they've not been operating, the fan's been running, it's not gone to ignition sequence, these Venturis, and it's just, I'll just pull these tubes off so you can actually see what I'm looking at. So the Venturi is just in there. It's just a... A very small orifice and what you get is a differential in pressure as it's moving across it creates a difference in pressure so it blows down one tube and sucks down the other one and that's what's affecting the diaphragm in that pressure switch and what I've come across in the past is those getting blocked up a little bit of dust a little bit of debris one of the common ones I must have had several times is a, a little tiny money spider creating a web in there and that gossamer web is enough to stop you getting the differential pressure. Very, very simple thing to find, but it can cause problems. Obviously, the customer's not getting the boiler going to ignition sequence. So that was a very quick video about checking the air pressure switches. I hope you found that uh, useful. If there's any other videos that you'd like us to do, any short ones, any long ones, please comment below. Um, give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. If you've got any questions about air pressure switches, about fans, obviously these fans are out of older boilers. The modern boilers on your premix burners don't tend to use air pressure switches because they've got uh, pulse width modulation, which connects and, and, and communicates back to the circuit board. Um, so you don't tend to find it's more your older boilers. So again, if you've got any questions, anything you'd like to, to us to do, please let us know. Thanks very much for watching. Until next time, bye-bye. Thank you very much for that, Roy. And once again, thank you to Viva Training Academy for all the help and support in doing these videos. Um, if you've got any questions, please put them in comments below. Please put thumbs up, like, share, all that good stuff. 
and, and thanks for watching.